Medicine versus surgery, a question that every medical student has to answer when applying to residency after finishing medical school. Do I want to do things with my hand? Do I want to take care of critical patients? Do I want to have an easier lifestyle, more money? All these questions go into the decision-making process of whether you want to pursue medicine versus surgery. In this video, we'll go over the advantages and disadvantages of medical versus surgical specialties, which hopefully will help you in your decision of which specialty you want to pursue. The first question that you have to answer when deciding on a specialty is, what do you like? What do you enjoy more? If you're someone who likes to solve patient problems using their hands, surgery might be a better fit for you. If you're someone who likes to think about the disease process, perform a detailed physical exam, uh, take history, go in the details of that, look at books and then come up with a treatment plan, medicine might be a better fit for you. However, this distinction of using your hand versus not is not really very accurate because in some medical specialties, you do a lot of procedures. For example, if you're doing GI, you do a lot of endoscopies. You don't do actual surgeries, but you do a lot of things with the scope that might be considered small procedures. The same applies to cardiology. If you specialize in interventional cardiology, where you do the cath, sometimes you replace a valve through the catheter. So that's why using your hand is not necessarily the distinction between surgery and medicine. But generally, surgical specialties rely more on their surgical techniques, their hands solving problems with their hands, while medical doctors solve problems by prescribing medications and some minimally invasive procedures. Also, there is a lot of variability within medicine and within surgery. For example, in surgery, if you're talking about general surgery, there are so many subspecialties within general surgery and the practice of each vary significantly. For example, an endocrine surgeon or a breast surgeon does a totally different type of surgeries compared to a colorectal surgeon or a transplant surgeon. The same applies to medicine. An interventional cardiologist, which is through the route of medicine, does totally different things than an endocrinologist. So that's why I'm saying within the specialty, you might find so many variations and within medicine and surgery, there are so many subspecialties. So that's why answering the question of what do I like is not that simple. And in my opinion, the best way to see what do you like is when you're doing your rotations, ask yourself, am I enjoying this rotation? Am I liking this more than the other? When you're in surgery, do you feel, oh my gosh, this is the best rotation I've been on. I enjoy this too much versus the other specialties where you say, I didn't enjoy this as much. So ask yourself this question every day you are on your rotation during your clinical years in medical school. Do I see myself doing this specialty for the next 20, 30 years in my life? Do I enjoy doing these type of things that this person does, the surgeon or the doctor, the physician, every day for the next 30 years? And if the answer is yes, that means this is a potential specialty you might go into. If you say, oh my gosh, I cannot tolerate this specialty, you might consider another one. However, for some medical students, the answer is not that simple. They go to a surgery rotation, they enjoy it. They go to an emergency medicine rotation, they enjoy it. Anesthesia, they enjoy it. So they enjoy most of the rotations. They don't have this, oh my gosh, this is amazing, I, I love this. They enjoy all these rotations equally. So in that situation, how they should choose the specialty that they should go into. This is a big commitment to go in a certain specialty for the rest of your life. So in medicine, you chose to go into medicine and you know that you'll branch afterwards, but now you're committing to a specialty. So you need to be very careful when you're choosing that specialty so you don't uh, spend your life not enjoying what you're doing. So in this situation, if you enjoy multiple specialties, I suggest you look at the other factors associated with the specialty, which I'll discuss next in detail, which are the lifestyle and the money. Now let's talk about the lifestyle of medicine versus surgery. And I'll go over the residence first, and then we'll talk about the faculty, the difference in lifestyle after you graduate from residency. The lifestyle of surgery residence is definitely harder than the lifestyle of medicine residence. And that could be reflected by the number of hours they work. So if we wanna assess which is easier, which is harder, we have to look at the number of hours they work and their schedule. So let's start by talking about the schedule for surgery residents. Surgery residents have to start surgeries generally at 7 a.m., which means they have to wake up, read on their patients, and round on their patient, which means you go see the patient, assesses, assess the patient, make sure that everything is fine before 7 a.m. And sometimes even they have to write their progress notes, which are the notes saying that the patient is doing fine before 7 a.m., which means most of the time they have to wake up around 4 a.m., get to the hospital at 5, read about the patients for an hour till 6, 
and from 6 to 7 they would be rounding on the patients and finishing the progress notes. Then from 7 a.m. until 4 or 5 p.m. they have surgeries. So they go in one surgery, they finish one, they go to the next and next until all surgeries are done. But meanwhile, while, while surgeries are going, they also have to be responsible for the floor patients. And by floor patients, I mean those patients who are admitted to the service of the surgeon. For example, if you are on a breast surgery, you have some patients who are staying in the hospital and you are responsible for them. So if something happens, the nurse will call you and you'll be in the operating room and you have sometimes to scrub out, which means you leave the operating room. Sometimes you might answer inside the operating room. So you might have things to do in addition to you being in the operating room. Also, there is something called consults. So other services, for example, medicine or the emergency room might call you and ask you, we need your help with this patient. This patient had breast surgery with one of your surgeons and now we need your help because they're having infection, they're having a problem with, with their surgery or some other surgical complications. So sometimes you have to scrub out from surgery in order to see these consults, deal with the floor issues, or sometimes you do them between surgeries, which means you might not have time to eat because if you start surgery, go to see a patient, then come back, do another surgery, go to see another patient, deal with floor problems, come back to the surgery and now it's 5 p.m. and you might not have the time to eat. That's why the surgery schedule is more hectic. Sometimes there might be a specific surgery resident who is responsible for consults or dealing with the full problems. And usually these are interns, the first year residents. But sometimes you might be the person who is in surgery and dealing with the floor problems. After surgery, which is very variable, what time do surgeries end? Sometimes they might end at three, sometimes they might end at five, which means you have to stay until six or seven. So if the surgery ends at five, you might go home directly if you don't have pending issues. But let's say you finish surgery at five and there were five new consults that came through the day and you have to see them now. So you have to go and see the patient, write notes on them, talk to your attending, uh, make sure that the plan is correct. Sometimes you have to deal with some floor problems, discharge patients all on your shoulders. So if you're on a busy surgical service, you might start around 5 a.m. and finish around 6 or 7 p.m. But as I said, this is very variable and depends on the rotation. Now let's shift gears and talk about the schedule of medicine residents. Medicine residents don't have to start surgery at 7 a.m. So that's why all their rounds are pushed. So the rounds usually for medicine is around 8 or 9 a.m., which varies based on the attending and what time do they want around. But generally it's between 8 and 9, which means you should show up around 2 hours earlier. So you show up around 6 a.m. to the hospital. And sometimes you need to show up around 6 a.m. to take sign out from the night person because when you leave uh, around 5, 6 p.m., there is somebody who covers the night. So when you come in the morning, you need to take reports from these people who are overnight to see what happened with the patients that you are taking care of. So usually this sign out happens around 6 a.m. for medicine residents. So they take information about the patients from the night and then they start doing the same things, reading about the patients, uh, looking at the consult, looking at labs, all the information in the charts about the patients. And then they prepare their plan, they go and see the patients and then they round with the attending. So this process of looking at the charts, uh, rounding on the patient will vary based on how many patients you have on your service but generally it takes between hour and a half to two hours so if your attending starts rounding at 8 a.m you should show up around 6 a.m do all these tasks and then start rounding generally rounds take between two to four hours based on the attending and how many uh, patients you have on your service but generally they're between two to four hours and they are done by noon during rounds the attending discuss with the residents the situation of each patient uh, what's going on with them and plan for that day. Most medicine residents grab lunch at noon, which is not the case for surgery residents because surgery residents try to eat whenever they have time. They don't have a specific time for eating, but medicine residents usually eat lunch around noon and then they have a conference in which they discuss different topics related to medicine. That is not usually the case for surgery. In surgery, you don't have a daily conference where you talk about different topics. Some programs might have it once a week, some might have two a week, but I did not see a case where they have a daily conference to discuss different topics related to their specialty. So after that conference, which usually ends around 1 p.m., the residents go back to finish the floor work, which means if there is something that they need to order, if they, there is something they need to follow up on, discharge a patient or admit a new patient until around 3 or 4 p.m. So after all the work is done, which is around 3 or 4 p.m., some residents might be able to go home, 
but other residents have to stay to cover the floor until 6 p.m., which is usually the sign out time. So you can see the difference in the structure of the day and the number of hours that medicine versus surgery residents work. So medicine residents start their day around 6 a.m. and they stay until any time between 3 and 6 p.m. As you can see by this discussion, the schedule of surgical residents is more hectic and in the majority of the time it's longer hours. On the other hand, general surgery for example is 5 years and some programs now are requiring the residents to do 2 years of research which makes it 7 years. Plastic surgery for example is 6 years, orthopedic surgery is 5 years, neurosurgery is 7 years. So most surgical residencies are way longer than internal medicine. But this might not be the full picture because for internal medicine, so many residents pursue a fellowship after internal medicine and most fellowships are three years. So if you do three years of internal medicine and for example, three years of GI or cardiology, that means it's six years. So now it's longer than general surgery. So if you just wanna do internal medicine, it would be shorter than surgery. It would be only three years. But if you wanna subspecialize within the fellowships of internal medicine, it would be similar, sometimes longer than surgery. Now let's talk about the difference in lifestyle between surgery and medicine after you finish your residency training and become an attending. In general, the lifestyle for surgeons is harder than of internal medicine doctors and the hours are longer for surgeons because as I said, most surgeries start around 7 a.m. which means the, the surgeon has to be in the hospital by 6.30 to talk to the patient before the surgery, time out and then start the surgery. If you have a busy day, you might be staying in the hospital until 4 or 5 p.m. sometimes longer. On the other hand, for internal medicine, you start your day at rounds, which is around uh, 8 or 9, and then you stay in the hospital until 2 or 3 p.m. And if there are any issues, people can call you over the phone. That's why so many consider the lifestyle of surgeons to be more difficult because of the longer number of hours that surgeons have to work. And also surgeries are very stressful, and so many consider these to be another stressor that can add to the difficult lifestyle of surgeons. However, as I said, there is a lot of variability between the specialties and between doctors themselves. You might find a surgeon who works half the hours of an internal medicine doctor because they don't want to do so many surgeries or because of the type of surgeries they do, they're quick and can be done before 2 or 3 p.m. So although generally surgeons work longer number of hours, that doesn't mean that every surgeon works longer number of hours than an internal medicine doctor because there is variability within the subspecialties. Some subspecialties of general surgery or plastic surgery or neurosurgery would allow you to have an easier lifestyle compared to other subspecialties. So again, it's not one rule that surgeons work longer than internal medicine doctors, but I'm talking in general, the lifestyle is more difficult for surgeons compared to internal medicine. An interventional cardiologist, on the other hand, might work double the hours of a surgeon or have to be waking up in the night multiple times. So it's not one rule that surgeons work more, longer than internal medicine doctors. Each subspecialty has its own lifestyle, its own criteria. So if you're interested in one particular area, I recommend you talk to people who are in that subspecialty, see their lifestyle, see the number of hours they work, and ask them all the questions you have so you can make an informed decision. Because it's not only one category, medicine versus surgery, it's more on the details of that and the subspecialties within each category. Now let's talk about money, which is a very important factor whenever you pursue any career. You might say to yourself now, I don't care about money, money is not important, but that is not true. Money is important and should be in your decision-making process of which specialty you wanna pursue or which route you wanna pursue. For residents, the salary is exactly the same. The salary does not change if you are in different specialty. If you are in a PGY1, which means you are a first year resident, the salaries are the same. It doesn't matter surgery versus medicine. If you are a PGY2, your salary is higher than PGY1. So the second year, your salary increases. The third year, your salary increases. And I made a detailed video about that, the salary, the lifestyle of residents but the salary increases based on the number of years, not based on the specialty you have. So during residency within the same year, the salary is the same. However, the difference starts after you graduate from residency. You'll find if you look at the median income or salary of a medical doctor versus a surgeon, you would find the median is around 400K, $400,000 a year for the, in the case of a surgeon, and around 200K or $200,000 for an internist. However, there is a huge variability in the salaries between uh, hospitals, between states, between the subspecialties of what you're working in, private versus academia. So in general, surgeons make more money than internists. 
However, you have to take this very carefully when you're looking at the different subspecialties because a cardiologist can make sometimes a double of what a surgeon makes. A GI doctor who does a lot of endoscopies might make again double of what a surgeon makes. A surgeon in the community or a private setting might make double of what a surgeon makes in academia. Difference also between states, salaries in New York and California are more than the salaries in the Midwest. Why? Because also life is more expensive in California and New York. So all these factors contribute to how much you're gonna get paid after you finish. But again, there is a median and approximations, but you'll find the range is massive and depends on so many factors. Another factor is the number of hours. So although you might get paid more as a surgeon compared to an internist, but the number of hours might be double because internists in some places work one week and take another week off. On the other hand, surgeons work five days a week. So that also contributes to the factor of how much you're getting paid. So if you're getting paid double, but because you're working more, that doesn't mean that surgeons make more. It means surgeons are working double, that's why they're getting paid more. So that's why if you wanna assess how much you'll be making after you graduate, I recommend you look at the median income in the setting that you're looking at, private versus academia, in the place that you're gonna be working at, which state, which city, and also the subspecialty of that big field. And finally, let's move on to the personality type. So many talk about the stereotypes of surgeons versus medical doctors, that surgeons are more competitive, type A personality, on the other hand, uh, internal medicine doctors are nicer, chiller, they are not as competitive or the environment is not as competitive as in surgery. So to answer that question, you have to experience it yourself. So I'm not gonna answer which one is more competitive, which one is nicer, because us as medical students, as medical graduates, as residents are different from each other. So in order to assess whether these stereotypes exist and which personality type meshes with you, you have to assess that yourself. So during your rotations, the clinical rotation in the final years of your medical school, assess these aspects. When you go and do your rotation, see whether these stereotypes exist, see if you mesh with the people of that specialty, because that's a very important factor. You'll be spending years in training with these people or people who are similar to them, or, and afterwards these people will become your colleagues. So it's important to have a personality type that fits within the specialty if that personality type exists. So these are some of the factors that you might consider when choosing medicine versus surgery. After watching this video, I'm sure you might say to yourself, it's not as easy as expected. It's not an easy decision and I agree with you. You have first to follow your heart and decide which specialty do you like more, which one do you enjoy more. And I understand if you like multiple specialties, if you like multiple uh, aspects of medicine. In that case, I recommend you look at the other aspects related to that. So if you like medicine and surgery equally the same, look at the lifestyle, which lifestyle appeals to you more, which income appeals to you more, which personality type appeals to you more. So start with what you enjoy, and if you enjoy multiple things, look at the other aspects such as lifestyle, money, and the personality type, and whether you like the people in that specialty. That brings us to the end of this video. I hope the information that I provided will help you decide of whether medicine or surgery is the right option for you. For me, it was surgery, that's why I'm pursuing plastic surgery residency now, but it might be different for you. If I miss anything that might help future medical students in making that decision, drop it in the comments below, or feel free to reach out to me on Instagram or Twitter at Malki Asad, my Facebook page Malki Asad MD, or our email info at matchguy.com. If you find any value in this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell sign so you get notified whenever I post future videos on my YouTube channel. Thank you everyone so much for watching, and good luck on your decision.